Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you. So for this video, since you saw my last beer review that I filmed in Sweden over the for the for the moment at least as I said, the Nuisim Ongs Bravery Badera Bitter, the first ever Swedish craft beer. I just thought for the last video that you'll see in this kind of series, if you like, I thought I would just do one on uh, a sort of summary of the Nordic beer scene or my experience of the Nordic beer scene so far. So I'll go through a few breweries, some of the best breweries I've come across in Sweden and Denmark, and uh, I'll tell you about some of my favourite sort of uh, beer places and stuff like that as well. So just take it, just take it that it's a little bit limited because I've not explored Sweden fully, I've not been to Norway and Finland yet, and uh, yeah, just. I just wanted to do this video as a little bit of a kind of bloggy thing and you guys seem to enjoy it as well. So, one of the general things I've noticed about the Nordic beer scene is just how humble people are. I mean, I've noticed, in, at least in the Anglophone world a little bit, there's a lot of bitchiness goes on in the beer scene. I mean, uh, you saw my, my thing where I was talking about Brewdog recently as well. There's a lot of beer snobbery and things like that. And I mean, I think in Sweden, at least in my experience, I've found that brewers and uh, people that drink the craft beers and stuff, they're just a lot more humble and I think generally i found, I personally I feel I fit a lot more into uh, into Scandinavia than I do at home. I think I kind of have a bit more of that uh, outlook about it as well and I just, I just really like it. The people here are very nice, they're very humble and I think it's a general maybe societal thing rather than just being limited to the beer but um, I mean I just wanted to go through some of my favourite Swedish breweries as well and say a little bit about them. So since I've been here uh, from uh, 2015. These are some of the best Swedish breweries that I've come across so far. So Brikeria obviously is one. They're based in Landskrona in Skåne. And uh, they're really interesting to me. They specialise in sour beers. You know, um, they're one of the, the breweries that have kind of proved to me that like uh, rate beer, you can't rely on it. You can't really can't rely on it. Because I try a lot of these beers from Brikeria and uh, they're really really good quality but they get you know like an 80 or something on a rate beer but then sometimes I'm like you know that's a really really damn good sour beer and um, they always experiment, the thing you have to say about Brickeria is they always experiment, they're always doing different things so if you love sour beers Brickeria are one that you want to check out. Brewski and Helsingborg, now these guys do some really interesting stuff as well really they're, an, they're mainly an IPA brewery like their Fever series that they do they do some really really lovely kind of fruit IPA beers. The Conan Double IPA actually is one of the best Swedish IPAs I think I've come across in my time here. That's a really, really nice beer. The Little Big Hoppy as well. And from what I've seen, they do experiment a little bit with uh, with stouts and things like that. But if you want some really, really good Swedish IPAs, then uh, Brewski is definitely a place that you want to go. They are one of the, I think, one of the best breweries in Sweden at the moment. They are doing some really, really nice stuff. Beer Bliotech. Now, Beer Bliotech are up in uh, Gothenburg. Gothenburg, I should say, is probably the beer city in Sweden. I've not been up and explored it too much myself, but from what I hear, the best place to go in uh, in, uh, in Gothenburg is the Brewers Bar, and there's a few of the different breweries have a stake in that. But Beer Bliotech are a really interesting brewery. From what I gather, they never brew the same beer kind of more than once. And uh, the thing is, I mean, with Beer Bliotech, you know, I haven't, as far as I can remember, I've not had a beer from them where I've been like, that's one of the best beers in the style that I've tried, but their beers, you know, they're all like, you know, 95 out of 100 sort of thing. They're all this kind of level, they're, they're all around that kind of level, 90, 95 out of 100. And you know, that's one thing that really impresses me with them. If they can do a beer on a whim, you know, they're like, oh bugger it, let's try this. And they produce it and it turns out like really damn well. That's the thing that really impresses me with Beer Bliotech, that they can produce so many different things and do it so well. Um, another brewery up there that I would really recommend is Dugas Brewery as well. They do some really nice kind of fruit beers, fruit IPAs and stuff like that. They brew a lot of the Imperial Stouts as well from for uh, Omni Pollo as well. They, they, they're they a really good quality brewery and uh, the, the Mango, Mango, Mango that I reviewed recently, that's one of the, the nicest sour beers I've come across as well. That was up there with uh, some of the things that Beer Blue, the uh, Brickeria of course were coming out with. So Dugas Brewery, another one that you really want to keep an eye on. They're always experimenting and they're quite prolific as well. There's always some really interesting things coming out from uh, from from Dugas Bravery, of course, as well. Up in uh, in Gothenburg, of course, you have OO Brewing. From what I gather, um, Oli, who was the brewer at Stiegberg's, he's now left and is focusing solely on the OO Brewing beers. And their beers, you know, he's a very very talented brewer. Of course, the the producer of the GBG Beer Week 2016, the Amazing Haze, the Muddle, of course. Some people, I think, the Amazing Haze is the best one out of the three. There's the Narangi 
from uh, from OO Brewing as well. You know, he's doing some really damn awesome things. So uh, OO Brewing is one that you definitely want to keep an eye on. Steve Berrix, of course. I'm not sure who they've hired as their, their next brewmaster, but I'm sure they will find somebody that will keep the same quality of beers coming out. So that's another two breweries that you want to check out from uh, from the Gothenburg area. One of the a brewery who I really rate quite high as well, actually, is Malma Brewing Company. Now, um, Malma Brewing Company is a sort of in-house bar and restaurant kind of thing, and uh, I've been on at them as well. I think Anders, um, I, I talked to Anders, the owner, I've spoken to him a few times, and the beers that they produce, they only do it on the small scale, but the beers they produce are really, really good, and I would love it if they kind of opened up a production brewery, but obviously that requires a heavy in investment and things like this. But you know, when it comes to sheer experimentation and stuff like that, you know, they've got the perfect setting, they've got a very successful kind of restaurant and bar and uh, they've got a little brewery as well so they can experiment and do whatever the hell they like. So if they were ever to open up a production brewery, they've got the perfect testing ground for it. But the beers you get in that bar are really good and if you do find yourself in Malmö, Tap Room is one of the places I would really recommend that you check out because they've got all their own beers which are really good quality and then they've got something crazy like 20 or 30 taps of, uh, of different beers. Some of them are foreign of course but a number of them are in the uh, the local scone spears and in Malmo of course you can check out Beer Ditch and they usually have some of the really good Danish things, some of the local scones things and they've got American stuff as well so that's two places you really want to check out in uh, in Malmo of course. There's also Omnipoyo, everyone knows Omnipoyo, these big kind of uh, imperial stout things they use, the, as far as I know they use the flavour essences and stuff like this. But um, they produce some some really nice beers as well. I know some of these Omnipoil styles, they are much of a muchness in terms of the kind of feel you get from them. Personally, my favourite is Yellow Belly. I was talking about this with some of the, the other beer tubing guys, and I think it was Craig at Kent Beer Reviews, like Anagram. He really, really loved Anagram. And I thought, oh, it's good, but for me personally, the Yellow Belly, I think, is the best one I've tried out of that series. But, you know, Omnipoil do some really, really quite good beers. Um, another brewery I'd like to mention actually is uh, is Mohawk Brewing. Now they do some really, really damn good winter beers and they are, I think, start, and Mr. Mohawk, as he's known, is starting to experiment with a few other things. He's starting to do more IPAs and uh, stuff like this, but if you really want some cracking uh, Imperial Stouts and some, uh, winter IP and some winter beers and stuff like that, Mohawk Brewing is a brewery that uh, you definitely want to check out at Christmas time. So those are probably my my kind of favourite Swedish breweries that I've come across so far. There are other breweries I think that are on the rise, like for example in Skåne we've got uh, Remeluv Gorge Brewery, they're doing some really interesting stuff with uh, with organic beers and stuff like that. Their red ale uh, Christmas time that they bring out is really good as well. Uh, I'm not so clued up on the Stockholm beer scene actually, so that's I need to go up to Stockholm and uh, explore that a little bit more and learn more about the breweries up there. But um, the Swedish beer scene, to sum it up, basically, the Swedish beer scene is incredibly strong. And maybe I would probably even go as far as saying that it's because someone, someone did ask me this in a video before whether I thought the Swedish beer scene was stronger than the Scottish one. And to be honest, I would say it probably is. And uh, I guess one of the main reasons for that is that Scotland has a very kind of traditional beer scene. There's a number of uh, breweries back home who brew the kind of real ales and stuff like that. But in Sweden, I guess Sweden in some ways has the benefit of not having such a, a kind of beer brewing heritage, if that makes sense. And it's, it's in contrast with Germany. So, for example, in Scotland, there's a number of breweries brew these real ale beers that aren't so full of flavour and things like that. But we do have a couple that are brewing the new the new wave American beers and stuff. But more and more, most of the breweries in Sweden, as far as I know, do brew in the American style. And that's kind of in contrast to Germany. Like, Germany is another country, of course, that has a, a, a really big uh, kind of beer reviewing heritage and if you go and watch my friend Peter over at the Clueless Drinker he reviews some of these kind of crazy German beers, these new wave German craft beers and uh, some of the things they're coming up with doing, like they, they're not all being the Reinheitsgebot obviously but um, obviously they're doing some really really interesting stuff and it is, it is kind of cool to see the contrast between different countries. There's so many countries these days that are producing some, uh, some really really good beers and uh, I was talking to a friend the other day and uh, he, he kind of had the impression that a lot of people thought the Swedish beer scene was a little bit behind other countries but I wouldn't say it as at all. I mean Denmark I would say when it comes to the American style of craft beer, Denmark are probably the, they probably could be the best in Europe but Sweden isn't that far behind them. They really, the, the quality of beers that you can get in Sweden these days 
is pretty damn good. My only criticism of, of Sweden in the beer scene would be uh, the control that Sistian Balaga has, but there's a big kind of political debate on exactly what to do with Sistian Balaga. When it comes to breweries and stuff, there's a lot of bureaucracy, and there are things that kind of hurt the business aspect of it a bit, but mainly um, businesses struggle to get their beers into the nationalised beer system, and there's some kind of strange things as well, like there's some breweries who only want their beer distributed in their local county, <clears throat> And to me that seems strange when you have like a national beer system and you can't distribute it across the country. You've got to pay to get your beer sent beyond your local three stores. It's a kind of, it's a very strange system. In some ways it works very well, such as price control and stuff like that. But um, breweries are having to bid to actually take slots and have beers ready nine months before they would actually go on the shelves. There's some really strange things with uh, Sistian Balagic. So I do hope that going forward, uh, the government can, and the, the industry, I guess, can maybe lobby the government a little bit as a collective and get them to relax some of these laws and help the industry grow. So hopefully that's something we can see in Sweden going forward. But as I would say, these breweries are some of the best ones that I've, uh, I've come across in Sweden so far. And the beer scene here is very strong. I guess that's a good way to sum it up. Of course, living in Skåne, I'm very close to, uh, to Copenhagen as well. So I do have a little bit of experience with the Danish beer scene as well. So just to mention some of my favourite uh, Danish craft breweries and things like, of course, Toul, their bar that they have in Copenhagen, Bruce, that's really quite cool. They have the beers that they release under the Bruce name as well and I've tried a couple of those and I had a flight when I was there and uh, those are really really good quality as well. When it came to McKellar and Toul, I have to admit I always found that Toul were producing things that were a little bit more, uh, were a little bit better in my eyes at least than McKellar. McKellar produced so many different things. They're a little bit like beer bibliotech in that way. They produce so many different things. But I have to admit, I think that the the general quality of the beers from beer bibliotech are a little bit better than uh, than the ones you're getting from McKellar. And that's not to say the McKellar beers are bad, not by any stretch of the imagination. But I think McKellar are producing so many different things these days. And uh, some of the, I mean, you go back and try some of the classic McKellar beers like Black Hole and stuff like this. Those, you know, those to me are better than the things they're producing these days. But they're starting up a sour project at McKellar, of course, so I'm sure there will be some really kind of uh, interesting things to come out with there. And of course, McKellar have the War Pigs bar in uh, Copenhagen, and that place is ridiculous. It's it's so good. If you get the chance to go there in the McKellar uh, War Pigs, it's a collaboration with Three Floyds and McKellar, it's absolutely amazing, so make sure you go and check that out. Of course, just along the road, you've got Kiosk as well, which is, a, is, is one of the best beer shops you're going to come across. They've got an amazing big beer seller. Karsten and Balder, I'm sure, can point you to some really, really good beers. But yeah, Toil are probably one of my favourite uh, Danish breweries that I've come across so far. Abeltoft. Now, I only discovered Abeltoft thanks to Karsten and Balder, of course. They handed me this beer and said, you have to review this one. So I took it home and uh, tried this beer and it was, you know, it was a cracking uh, New England IPA. It was a really, really damn good beer. They're very, very new. They were producing sour beers originally, but I think by the time I come back to, to Sweden next year, these guys will have moved on immensely, I think. That's a brewery, I think, that you want to keep an eye on and, uh, and see how they get on. They'll be producing some really nice stuff. Uh, Amar Brewkus, of course, these guys quite easily, one of the best breweries in Europe. They do some really, really good stuff. Mainly, they brew IPAs. They've stuck mainly to the kind of West Coast IPAs uh, until very recently, of course, until the start of this year, 2017. But they're starting to experiment a little bit more with the kind of New England style of IPAs and things like this too. But that said, they're dark beers. I mean, uh, my two favourite beers from them that I would pick out probably Batch 1000 and uh, the Herr Fredrickson. So Batch 1000 is one of the best West Coast IPAs, maybe the best West Coast IPA that you're going to come across in Europe. That was a really, really damn good beer. Herr Fredrickson is one of the classic Danish Imperial styles. It's up there with like, the, the Black Hole from McKellar, of course. So uh, Amar Brukus are a very very consistent brewery. They've just celebrated their 10th anniversary and you know they, they're probably one of my favourite breweries that you're going to come across in, uh, in Scandinavia just now. So try and make sure you try some of the Amar beers and I think you will start to get them a bit more widely uh, very soon because they're just moving to a new brewery I think by the end of 2017. But Amar, really really damn good beers. Horn beer of course are another one that I've uh, had some good experiences with as well. You can see the horn beer bottles just up behind me, the Vladimir P, which they don't do anymore because they get threatened with Russian hackers. 
and uh, also the Caribbean rum stout, like Horn Beer, are another uh, really, really good brewery. I like their kind of distinctive style of artwork, and the beer is also really, really good quality. You know, um, Horn Beer is one that you definitely uh, want to check out. Ugly Duck Brewing, they are doing some really interesting stuff as well. They obviously started out as a specialist wheat beer brewery. They're starting to experiment with sours and things like that now, and uh, generally they are doing some really quite uh, some quite cool stuff as well. And uh, you know, they're, they're at, some of their IPAs are really good. They're dark beers, the Imperial Stouts and uh it was the Putin Imperial Stout that was a really good one. Uh, they're doing some really interesting stuff. They're constantly experimenting and bringing out some new beers. So I think Ugly Duck, uh, the beers that they're producing now are really quite good and I think they're only going to get better and better I think too. Um, beer Here is another one. They've, they brew their beers on Bornholm, one of the best brown ales I ever had actually. The, uh, the Karma Citra, that was produced by beer here, and a lot of their beers are a bit stronger, but they are a really, really damn good brewery. That's another Danish brewery that you really want to keep an eye on. They started out as a gypsy brewery, and now they've got their own premises on Bornholm, which is, uh, is really quite cool. Another brewery who I think you have to keep an eye on over the next little while as well is uh, Dry and Bitter. They're producing some really nice stuff as well. I reviewed the Hobo Chick recently. They've got the... Uh, I think it's the, the Atomize that's just come out as well, or the Ionized beer, and uh, their beers are getting rave reviews at the moment, so that's another brewery that you definitely want to keep an eye on from Denmark. I'm not as experienced in the, the Danish beer scene as I am with the Swedish one, of course, but these are just some of my, I just wanted to list a few of my favourite breweries that I've come across uh, so far while I've been here in Scandinavia, and as I say, you guys seem to uh, to enjoy these kind of bloggy videos that I do. Just to give a mention, of course, to like Norway, Iceland and Finland as well, the other Nordic countries, to make it a kind of truly Nordic thing. I mean, in Iceland, of course, you have some really good breweries. They are Ovesud, uh, the Lava Beer, that's one of the kind of Pinnacle Icelandic uh, beers and Borg Brukhus as well from Reykjavik. And when I was looking at the Reykjavik beer, there's another few little craft breweries popping up around Iceland too. There's one in Hufen, I forget what the name is, and there's a couple of others just popping up around the country. Iceland uh, and Gaidinger uh, Brewery as well, they're producing all Iceland, you would, for a very, very small country, they produce some really damn awesome stuff, and there's more and more breweries opening all the time. So I think Icelandic craft beer has a uh, has a really good time ahead. Of course, you've got Einstuck, who are uh, pretty well known. There's American guys that own that company, but Iceland, of course, does have a strong beer scene. Norway, of course, probably my favourite Norwegian brewery that I've come across is Hanbrigeriet from Dramen. They produce some really nice things. Their Belgian IPA, the, the Norwegian Woods, the Akavit Porter is a really interesting one as well. Um, Hanbrigeriet do some awesome stuff, but I'd love to get up to Norway and try some of the other things. I know there's Keen Bregery, there's Nunu, uh, uh, there's all of these kind of guys up there but the Norwegian beer scene is one that I definitely want to visit a little bit more because I know that's very very strong too and um, Finland is an interesting one I mean I've had a good few uh, comments from Finnish people I've reviewed something like three or four Finnish beers for you on the channel over the last little while uh, what was it the Plevnon Superior which was a really interesting kind of hoppy imperial stout uh, there was also the Prigmeister which was one of these uh, not, I can't I forget what the uh, what the, I think it's a sati, I think the Finns call it, the Gotland Strike, that kind of smoked beer, um, and that was really, really damn good. And But I was hearing from a lot of Finnish guys that uh, the problem the Finnish breweries have is that um, it's very difficult for the, the local breweries to maintain the quality and consistently produce beers of the same quality, but also there's issues with the costs. It's actually cheaper because of taxis and various other things. It's, it's cheaper for them to import things like Sierra Nevada and uh, all of these kind of American beers into Finland than it is for them to uh, produce things of the same quality locally. And of course, as I say, you have these problems with consistency and stuff like that. So it's a real shame. I mean, I know there's uh, there's beer hunters uh, and there's a few other, like uh, Mongard and Panimo and things like that. There's some really, really good breweries up there that I've had a little bit of experience with. And uh, it's a little bit of a shame. I do hope that that we start to get more and more Finnish beers kind of finding their way outside of Finland. So hopefully the craft beer scene takes a little bit more of a hold in Finland. From what the, the Finnish guys were telling me, um, there does seem to be a little bit more 
uh, re the government would be need to intervene and sort of re, -re, -re legislate and things like this to get the Finnish beer scene moving a little bit. So hopefully that's something that we uh, we start to see from Finland in the next little while. But my experience of the Finnish craft beer scene uh, so far with the beers I've had, I've been really impressed with the quality of stuff that we've put out. Like I say, I just wish it was a little bit easier to get, and I do hope that the the problems that these that the Finnish subscribers are telling me that they're having that they start to get solved and we see more Finnish beer coming out of there. But um, yeah, I mean that's a good way I guess to sum up the the kind of Nordic beer scene. I know there's some craft breweries in the Faroe Islands as well, and there is one or two in Greenland from what I understand. So I need to see if I can review my first beers from the Faroe Islands and Greenland as well. And then you've got something from all of the Nordic countries, Estonia as well. So they are kind of related to the Finns, but they're more of a Baltic country than a Nordic country. Estonia has a very good beer scene as well. But um, just to sum it up, I mean, the Nordic beer scene is very strong, as I say, in all of these countries you find people that are very, very humble uh, and that's what they, they want to focus on making kind of good beer rather than being beer snobs and kind of uh, and, and just being we are, we are the best in the world and all this. I find that the, the beer scene in Scandinavia and the Nordic countries is very humble. They want to just get on with making good beer. They want to chat with their friends and just enjoy a few beers and I think for me that's what it's all about. So I hope you've kind of enjoyed this little bloggy post that I've done. I think I'll call it a thought on uh, the Nordic beer scene but um, it's really cool just to kind of sum up some of these breweries for you, let you know what ones you should check out. But like I say, hopefully I can get some more experience of the, the Norwegian and uh, the Finnish beer scenes. And hopefully I can get back and do some more Icelandic beers for you, some Greenlandic, some Faroese and uh, some more Estonian stuff too. But I thought you guys would quite enjoy this video. Uh, let me know your own thoughts in the comment section below. Of course, do suggest other breweries from all of these countries that I should have a look at if I've not mentioned them. I probably have just forgotten someone I've been doing this video, but um, do let me know some of the best breweries from the Nordic countries and I hope you've enjoyed that kind of little summary of beers and breweries and stuff that you should check out from uh, the Nordic countries. So until the next time, Slange just now, tomorrow you will see my first review that I'm uh, going to film in Scotland for you and it's a special one, there will be a special guest there, so I hope you guys enjoy that and I will catch you guys very soon. Scott.